Hello, how are you? Thank you very much. I'd like to thank Damian and the Media Morphosis team for, in, for having us. Place, the multi-platform channel RTVE. I'm not a theorist. I have been working on RTVE digital area. I have been learning by doing things, as most of us here. What I'm going to do is to share with you my experience. Over the past 10 years, until a year and a half ago, we worked very hard creating content and digital strategies around the contents that uh, RTVE uh, does, which is a Spanish radio and TV. We have been creating content around this in 2008. Facebook had just started. There was no Twitter. The social media were not what they are today. Transmedia was a theoretical concept, but it was not rolled out to practice. And as Karim was saying, at the end of the day, you learn by practicing. Changes happen overnight. Ten years ago, no one knew about VR or social media or transmedia. After several experiences creating content for series, we have had successful experiences like uh, 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 the case series. And last week, we were told that he has won several awards and at Cannes as well, he's got a Cannes award. So after a year and a half, taking into account all the years taking place around platforms and content distribution, RTVE has launched Place. We arrived late because in Spain, other general channels had already launched their own original content platforms created for the internet. But since we were late comers, we had to create something powerful. So I'm going to share with you what our experience has been around content over the past year and a half. We are like the oldest at the party because RTVE is public radio and TV. And at RTVE, everything needs to be very intense. Sometimes it sounds not very modern or not very contemporary. So when did it start? Well, we started a year and a half ago. We launched this project in November, actually. So it, actually, it hasn't been a year since the launching. This is some information that I'm showing you to support uh, my presentation. I'm not a theorist, as I said. Now we are going towards multi-platform consumption, so a linear uh, TV company has to reinvent itself, otherwise it will not reach out to young audiences. So we are forced to reach out to young audiences. We cannot just be content with the fact that we are radio, uh, a radio and TV company for people in the middle uh, who are middle-aged. This is a video that shows where the title of this uh, talk comes from. This is one of our fiction series based on the web. It's called Mambo. And this is just for you to have an idea and to have some fun. Aparta molestas que el rey de la fiesta me montaba con la vasca en plan Tira de esta las pibas flipaban con mi pelo en capa Tranqui igual trapa, yo ya pasé esa etapa Antes todo esto era campo, justo ahí había un barranco Michael Jackson puso de moda los calcetines blancos Era rey con mil pesetas y la cara de Franco sin internet ni móvil Hablando con la gente cara a cara, una locura De repente mis frases ya no tienen sentido ¿Qué es Spinner? Ahora la música es ruido Yo lo intento, pero me muevo más lento Cambia el cuento y hablo rollo En mis tiempos Me acabo de bajar el vine LOL 
Para venir tuve que dormir una siesta. Soy el mamiado de la fiesta. Vi el partido en el que debutó Iniesta. I'm the oldest guy at the party, says. I'm the oldest guy at the party. That's repeated throughout the song. Mi baile es la lambada, reventaba verbenas. Ahora me sienta mal beber antes de la cena. Soy de la era de las dos cadenas, la uno y la dos. Si fumo me da tos, jugaba al trompo y al yo-yo. De póster de Pamela Anderson en mi habitación cuando Ronaldo... El brasileño. Era Dios. Ahora no importan las reglas ni la ortografía, pero es demasiado fácil encontrar pornografía. En mis tiempos no era solo pulsar un botón. Había que imaginarse en una relación. Tres citas, primer beso y una discusión. Una reconciliación en nuestra habitación. Se escapaba una tenda y llegaba la eyaculación. Perdona. Eso serías tú, yo iba directo al mambo. Soy el más viejo de la fiesta. Con el efecto 2000 me acojoné. Soy el más viejo de la fiesta. Me he masturbado con gente que está muerta. Soy el más viejo de la fiesta. He rebobinado una cinta de cassette con un bolígrafo. Soy el más viejo de la fiesta. Vida buten, tío, somos la pomada de aquí. Soy el más viejo de la fiesta. Ni he sido yo. Soy el más viejo de la fiesta. Mi liquituli, catapuli, la cosita. So, some expressions that will be understood only in Spain, but I believe that that's basically the message. We are older, we move more slowly, and for this we need to change. So what are the challenges for plays? What do we want to be when we grow up? Because we have been operating for a few months only, and we are in a trial and error stage. We are trying to identify which paths to take, so who new creators and digit and original content so now we need to create original content with a very powerful view trying to provide new opportunities for new creators how transmedia and interactive these have been two very important pillars for us um, you uh, multi-platform youth channel needs these two very important pillars Throughout our projects, a part of the budget is called Yes Transmedia. All contents have to be created with a 360-degree approach. I like 360-degree rather than Transmedia, so we go to different platforms for content creation. Where? Multi-device, multi-platform. And why? Well, we have said that the youth have quit television. Who's on plays? I'm going to show another video to sum up. Welcome to plays. An open digital space that has been devised for the youth. Interactive quality contents with no advertising, a platform present on all social media, a website where to view all your content fiction, thrillers, comedy, Game of Thrones, musicals, the best web series, pioneers in engaging with its viewers, and besides entertainment, documentaries, humor, digital sports spaces, and direct broadcasts when and wherever you want. This has been proposed by young talents, innovation at place, the best contents of RTVE for the youth. Very good. So to sum up, three pillars for content innovation, trying to look for ways to tell and distribute stories. This should be geared to an audience between uh, 18 and 34 years of age. So we uh, adjust as we go. And something very important is that the social media are channels. It's not just a distribution platform in the terms of communication distribution. The social media should be used as channels for content creation. Let's talk about concrete projects. 
si fueras tú, if it were you. This is the most powerful content that we have created. We used it for our launch. It is the most powerful one because of its concept and because of the budget. It is a series. Actually, it is an, uh, an adaptation from a Dutch format from 2010, and we have updated it. It is a digital series where every week users vote between two options at the end of each chapter. So the next uh, episode is recorded. The scripts have already been devised, taking into account both uh, options, so they are recorded and launched on a weekly basis. It is a digital series, and then it ends up being a TV movie broadcast by the uh, most important Spanish TV company. The viewers create because they in, are engaged in the script among a menu of options. So there is voting by the audience by the televiewers. And we have wanted to give it a transmedia concept. Not just you participate, it is interactive, and they participate in the script, but they participate by interacting with some of the actors, particularly the main role every week during the launch of the, uh, and during the eight weeks it is brought it is launched on Mondays it is not a TV channel so it is launched at 9 at, at 9 30 there is a Facebook live with the main role the actress who's acting as if he were the character in the uh, series. So she's asking for feedback as to what do I need to do and just choose between these two options. So the viewers, the audience, has a much stronger engagement. And then I'm going to show you a video that will give you a better idea. Then there's play test. This was a direct kitchen experience. It didn't work too well. We need to make some adjustments here. The cook was a three star, three Michelin star cook, but we needed here a stronger push, and that's why it didn't work. But the experience was very interesting. For half an hour, he prepared something live and through Facebook remarks. There were questions, and he answered the questions and provided explanations. Inhibidos, inhibited. It's a series for the youth from eight, 12 minute episodes. Compared to the stronger series, these are low budget series because today we, there are so uh, many a la carte series, so that it doesn't make much uh, sense to talk about TV series or web series. They're all series. These are shorter. The topics or the themes are geared to a younger audience, and the budgets are smaller. And well, you have to. Uh, really work hard to and make do with the budget you get. This is another interactive experience. This is a series that you can see in two different ways. You can either watch it linearly with eight 12 minute episodes. It's a thriller for the youth. These are some young people that go to um, a ranch at the weekend and they are kidnapped. And we did this in-house at RTVE, an interactive a player, and there are two experiences. There's a customized or personalized experience with a user registration where you can even use a phone call. You're watching the first episode, and all of a sudden, you get a phone call by one of the main roles. And you pick up the phone, and they, are, they talk to you like, hey, guy, we are missing you, and so on. So it's the whole purpose of this is to gain engagement from the viewers in order to have a more unique and personalized experience. There were different times here where you could choose another camera. Some things that were happening at the same time, you could click on this button for interaction, and you could see what was happening 
simultaneously somewhere else in the room or in the house. Young audiences, if you, I'm going to skip from one project to the other, then if you are interested in any project in particular, you can approach me and we can talk in, uh, in more detail. I'm going to go into more detail when we discuss the transmedia portion of this. Mambo, well, the target age is 25 to 34, six 20 minute episodes. The strength here is that there is a design behind this. Uh, there's a digital, a very famous digital creation company. He was the creator of Malviviendo, which is a serious, a very famous one. So one of the pioneers in digital creation with billion, uh, millions of uh, viewers. So we have tried to provide opportunities and more budget to people who have already uh, proved that they have the ability and the capability, but have not maybe made uh, the jump to a bigger project. Cupido, Cupid, well, here the target age is 18 to 24. This series was created by Frank Carissa. He's a, a major uh, creator in Spain. He has several TV projects, so Cupido. And this is geared to you, to young audiences. The transmedia portion is not so strong here. The strength here is that it is geared towards the youth. Not everything is uh, fiction. All uh, television, it is a musical challenge on TV. It is broadcast on the Spanish TV. It is a great success. And there is a digital, a very powerful digital strategy around this. And it's made it really very successful. Operación Triunfo is the name. So we had a weekly show with the winners of the program going to Eurovision. And then this uh, GRL Power, a documentary series. This is geared, this is about uh, young women who succeed on different fields, um, a film director, a sports manager, and so on. This is a project that I like, especially it is a Spanish Argentine crop production. I don't know if you've seen it. Let me show you the trailer. How's everything going there? Quite well. This house is amazing. We have been doing things with images. It's kind of strange. What's wrong? There's someone in the house. You are on your own in the house. There's no one in the house. You can rest assured. Have you heard that? The line was cut. I don't know. Look. Wait, 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 wait. There's, can't you tell that there's someone playing with you? It's an actress. Who are they? Have you heard that? They are banging all the doors. I could hear that very clearly. Very soon. As I was saying, it's a co-production. It was shot in Buenos Aires with a screenplay from Arge an Argentine uh, writer. And we are very interested in the new narrative possibilities. This has been devised for the computer screen for wearing your headsets. And I believe it's an important example because we are interested in exploring 
Latin American audiences because we are a multi-platform channel, we are an open channel, we're on YouTube, we're in the social networks, we have no geographic limitations, so we're very interested in this and we have some of the productions we have released have been popular in Argentina, in Mexico, etc. The second pillar, the social networks, using the social networks as channels. Three examples. One is Goya's Golfos. This is different coverage. This is a kind of um, more popular coverage of the Goya Awards, the most important cinema awards in uh, Spain. So we have the influence of the YouTubers who are highly influential. They are on the red carpet covering the uh, event. And then on the other hand, we have Ricky. He's one of the participants of the talent show, Operación Triunfo, covering through Twitter. And Eurovision is also covering on Instagram. So bringing together this concept, we are public TV channel with a linear history. However, we are not the web, but we are the digital strategy of the art TVE um, company. So how are we telling stories today? They are being told in the social network. So there are some new narratives to explore. These are the open, the, the new fields that open up. We also have Place Flash. It's using Instagram stories. With Instagram TV, we have to rethink how we do it now. But the idea is to start using Instagram stories as a channel with grid. So people, the users, don't feel you are using Instagram in order to push content. The users of those platforms are looking for content. If they're on Instagram, they want Instagram content that has been devised for Instagram specifically. So that's a challenge. And with Instagram Live, well, you know, it's replicating what we do in our, in other platforms. For instance, we have live interviews with artists, actors and actresses. We have one-on-one -on -one transmissions between members of uh, different entertainment options. So the transmedia concept, I believe that what I can contribute here is this 360 concept we have. When we create a transmedia strategy, it's not about adding elements to a narrative universe. On the other hand, the concept from the very beginning should be global in nature. So we do it digitally now, but in the future, if RTVE wants to survive and continue being a relevant player in this communication and content creation ecosystem, it will have to have this pervasive initiative in all its media outlets. So we de developed this product, if it were you, Si fueras tú. So, these are complex scenarios, and we have to Hola, think about the other people. I am si the protagonist of If It Were You, and I'm going to need your help. Will you join me? Accelerated course to participate in If It Were You. It's a digital and transmedia series. With your opinion and your votes, you can change the story. It's true. The screenplay is rewritten and re uh, recorded every week, depending on the audience's opinions. When will it be premiered and where? The first chapter is the September 11th on streaming at our website. Every morning you can enjoy a 10-minute chapter, eight in total. With your decisions, a TV movie will be created, and it will be released at the end of the season. Se uh, season. How do I participate? The protagonist, myself, will have a choice between two options. It's a moment to go to the Facebook page of this series 
and participate. At the end of each chapter, I will connect on Facebook Live with the fans of the series, and I will read their opinions on the Facebook well, you will be able to vote. If you were Alba, if you were me, what would you do with a winning decision? The screenwriters will write the next chapter that will be recorded that week and will be released the following week. So what does it mean to have a transmedia series? The social networks will um, expand the contents and expand the tracks. And you will also have the possibility of being part of my uh, cell phone WhatsApp. So please take down note of my number. Are you ready to see the series? Welcome. If it were you. So it was very full a project and uh, the casting was very remarkable. So we were in the shortlist of the Cannes Festival for series. So in the future, we want to go in this direction. Now, to make contents that work well, we need larger projects. Linear TV is involved in this uh, project. So in terms of budget, we had a higher budget than the rest of the projects. Other contents we have been working with is El Punto Frío, The Cold Point. It's a terror series with 15-minute uh, episodes. And the idea was to create a mystery map in Spain. The first one had to do with a legend, a legend, the Santa Compaña from Galicia. So on the one hand, we have the paranormal blog from an investigator who is a close friend of the leading player, and then a podcast telling legends of Spain, they are told by the leading player. So during the series, his big dream is to have a podcast. It's a, an interview. It's research for the cold point. Every 30 years, something happens. The corpse in the woods. So someone's listening. A girl. A woman with a secret. You don't know who you are. And a legend to discover. Don't be on your own in the woods. Get ready to go in the cold point. So, you can uh, visit our website or our uh, YouTube channel. I encourage you to join us so that you can give us your opinions. So, this is uh, our own content, it has podcasts, and it is part of a narrative universe. Transmedia Mambo. Mambo. We had the first season last year. This is a season that will be released in October. It is a very successful series. This year, what we have done is there is a character that during the series sees a fiction with the main character. And what we have done this year as part of our transmedia initiative is to shoot a series it's like the Simpsons series. I know that Simpsons is very popular in Argentina, so it's like uh, three chapters of that series. And it was shot in Canaria, in the Canary Islands, three episodes. So, under the network, this will be released in three weeks. It is inspired in the scam experience. 
SCAM is a, a key reference for content creation and distribution. Characters have their own networks. So between the weekly episodes, there will be stories, Instagram stories for each character. And we will also put some billboards so that people can access a website where they will get some clues as to how the uh, story will continue. Now, plays, we also have our distribution area. Our concept is to have a multi-platform offering. We are lucky because we don't need fundraising. We are a public service. We are open TV. And this gives us some freedom to explore contents and new platforms. So we also have the red button and we have our YouTube channel where we can post our contents. We also post on the social networks without limitations. So that's it. We have our mobile app and thank you. Are there any questions? When you explained, if it were you, everybody understood what we were talking about. We understand the possibility of engagement, interactivity, and creating contents with the engagement of people. So, Agus, you said that SCAM was a key reference for you. And last year, SCAM attended our conference in Buenos Aires. And like plays, they are also open TV. So they had a similar goal to bring or to come closer to a different audience, different from the audience of public TV. Have you achieved this? We have achieved this with some of our contents. Of course, in general terms, we have achieved this goal, but we also have some lessons learned. At the end of the day, it is very important to have branding. We have launched a brand, and you need to work very hard to promote the brand. We have to rethink the brand. We need to have focus groups with the people we want to reach and what kind of topics they are interested in, because SCAM, at the end of the day, is a benchmark of doing that preliminary effort of trying to understand what is being said. They are, were part of our K. They are in the platform of the public channel. So here you have a public channel, but you have also created a brand. So this gives us some... This is of concern to us because Place is a very innovative platform in uh, Spanish TV. It is our weakness today. We have to work very much on it, and it's promoting our brand. But we also need to uh, take some distance because that brand, RTVE, is highly polluted for young audiences. So this happened with Operación Triunfo and with the series uh, Si Fueras Tú or If It Were You. So it's a strategy. Now, Sorry for speaking at length, but in German TV, they have taken a, an extreme position. I believe you should never depart completely from your STEM or your uh, parent brand. They created a brand where they wanted the old link to disappear completely. I believe it is a mistake, and I believe they are noticing this too, because you can focus on the young audience because you don't want to be the old guy in the party, but you should never forget your origin as a public TV outlet. In Argentine production, there are many colleagues here who are 
independent producers and screenwriters, and many of you will have meetings with you after this. So is there a certain path or journey that you can recommend for interacting with Spanish TV? The way we work, the, all the contents are produced by external producers. They bring a project or we commission them to develop a project. So they come, they, we arrange on a budget. We, it's quite hard to do that part for producers because this requires producers to have certain financial muscle because you, the producing company has to make a down payment. For Limbo, this was a co-production that was already going on between Cruz del Sur and a, a Spanish producer. So they came with the project and we quantify the project in great detail, but they have to make the initial payment So because you pay them once the full project has been delivered. So the idea is to work with, uh, if you want to work with a Spanish producer, this is a model that we have today. I'm not saying that in the future it may be different. So if you want to produce with Spain, the most direct way would be to look for a Spanish partner and also a content that will be interesting for Spain. It has to be like a shared idea. You need to connect with both audiences. My question was answered by Damian's uh, question, or answer to his question. It has to do with transmedia content. Blaze is a platform that derives from Spanish TV. So my question is, do you use that communication channel to um, promote your productions? And have you investigated how you can do transmedia promotion of your transmedia products? Is there any creative journey you are exploring? to support that development. So how to use transmedia as a marketing channel for transmedia content. So transmedia, marketing, transmedia. So it's like the meta transmedia. So we have used the TVE channel and the RTVE channel. So we have a convergence between digital and linear channels. So one of them comedy content proposals with its own narratives. It's um, like it takes place in an office with co-workers. We have benefited from this convergence. But this is the weakest link, as I was saying. We have done a major release of very powerful contents, but we have a small team, and so we need to work more strongly on promoting their branding, and we need to make it more pervasive. So the meta transmedia, if transmedia content has been well developed, it should work as standalone content. It should uh, do its own marketing of the main uh, narrative universe. So we should work on that. And we should also work on transmedia marketing. What we, what we need to do is to make it work and to do it right, because you take risks. You take risks and you need to understand the main pillars for the narrative universe of a series of, or an entertainment production. Thank you very much.